This morning on Wake Up Northwest, Kennewick police are looking for a wanted man after a slow chase through the Tri-Cities. Also, Tropical Storm Elsa continues her path through the East Coast after making landfall in Florida and parts of Georgia. And still to come, a new business is in town, offering our community the chance to get a little taste of India. Wake Up Northwest starts right now. From your home of the Tokyo Olympics. Wake up, wake up, you gotta rise to the sun. And here it comes, it's time to make the best of what you got to give. And if you ever need to see a smiling face, I know right where you can find one. Good morning to you. It is 5 a.m. on Thursday, July 8th. I'm Madeline Carter. And good morning, everyone. I'm Monty Webb. We do weather every 10 minutes here on Wake Up Northwest. And I've got some good news today. Yeah? Sunshine and temperatures a little cooler. Yes. Not a lot, just a little. Yeah, so it's just that little ray of hope this morning. I know. It, it'll take the edge off. Thank All you right, for that. So morning temperatures are going to be in the upper 60s uh, out the door at 7 o'clock in the Tri-Cities. Uh, you'll need your sunglasses all day long. Pretty nice for the noon hour. Heck, you might even be able to get outside and do a little walk around the block. 86 nice. degrees and 97 for that daytime high at 5. Yes, that's still above average, but I'll take any type of cooling trend I can get. In the Yakima Valley, 66 at 7, uh, 85 degrees by noon, and then 94 at 5 o'clock. We are tracking triple digits. We'll talk about that coming up. Breaking overnight, Kennewick police are looking for a wanted man after a slow chase through the Tri-Cities. And Sigmund Soroka joins us now with how he got away driving on four flat tires. Hey, Siggy, what can you tell us about this chase? Good morning, Madeline and Monty. And what I can tell you is that police found that police found the car that 24-year-old Daniel J. Doyle left just after midnight this morning. Doyle is wanted for previously running from the police, possessing and intending to distribute fentanyl with four misdemeanor charges as well. Now, police said they found Doyle driving and began the chase around 10.30 p.m. when he refused to pull over. KPD said they stopped chasing him shortly after they thought their spike strip flattened his tires, and the chase continued again when they found his vehicle a second time, still driving near Columbia Drive and Fruitland Street. Police said they used spike strips during both chases, leaving Doyle with only his rims to drive on. Police also told me that the chase went through the city for about 40 minutes on four flat tires at 15 miles an hour before they ended the chase at 10th and Gum for the safety of the public and themselves. Police said they located the abandoned car Doyle destroyed about a quarter mile from where they stopped chasing him but could not find him even with the help of a canine unit. Now, if anyone has any information about Doyle's whereabouts, they're to call dispatch or go to kpdtips.com. Live in the newsroom, Zygmunt Sroka, Wake Up Northwest. Thank you, Siggy. Now in fire mode, all lanes of State Route 240 West are now back open as fire crews continue to monitor a brush fire in Kennewick. I actually drove past that fire yesterday morning when it started just after 11 a.m. And if you were out on Columbia Park Trail by Edison Street like I was, you likely saw the smoke in the air. Uh, State Patrol, Washington State Patrol, they closed down one lane of 240 West because of all of that smoke. Fire crews say the fire has burned several acres. They're still trying to figure out how it started. In Finley, a fire from the 4th of July rekindled yesterday morning and burned down a shed. Fire crews responded to the fire on East Game Farm Road around 7 a.m. No one was hurt, but investigators say it all started in a haystack, then spread to the shed, and it does bring up an important reminder for all of us. Just remind people that uh, it is hot and dry, and it doesn't take a whole lot to get a fire started, both in the wildland and in a structure setting. Fire crews want you to know that fires can rekindle just like this one did. They're still trying to figure out the cause. 
In a scam alert, Benton PUD wants to warn the community about a scammer that's calling around town, threatening to disconnect customers' power, that is, if they don't pay up over the phone. All right, if you get a call like that, just know it is a scam. Benton PUD says they will not call you or ask for your payment information over the phone. Call the police if you do get a call like that or if you know anything about it. Education news now. Vaccinated students at Walla Walla Community College are now eligible for a $1,500 scholarship. Ten students will be chosen to receive that money from the Washington Lottery System. Each student who shows proof of vaccination by July 26th will be entered into that lottery for the chance to win enough money to pay for a full quarter of next year. The winners will be chosen the week of July 26th, but before then, the college is hosting a vaccine clinic for students on July 15th. That will be from 11 to one at the Recreation Center. Oregon Governor Kate Brown has signed an executive order directing all state agencies to limit water use. Right now, this season is Oregon's hottest and driest on record. The governor's order encourages companies and state facilities to conserve water by limiting its use in landscaping and in irrigation. Governor Brown says this will allow the state to preserve water for putting out fires. Your health now, it is summer, and you know what that means, Monty. Mm -hmm. Sunscreen, sunscreen, and more sunscreen. Yeah, I just like to fill up the bathtub and uh, float around in the sun. Oh, sunscreen. is that like how you like to go swimming? Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the safest thing to do. And we all know that sunscreen will indeed help prevent sunburns. Uh, but is there any type of sunscreen that is better to use? Ah, good question. Well, Lindsay Jensen shows us the difference between using lotion and spray sunscreen. Good morning, Lindsay. Hey, good morning, Madeline and Monty. Well, as long as you're putting on the sunscreen properly, lotion and spray sunscreens have the same protection and coverage. Spray sunscreen is used more than lotions because it can be easier to apply. However, some people still get burned with the spray on sunscreens, which makes us wonder, is it worth it if you're still getting sunburned? Roseanne Kahn, the account manager at Elta MD Skincare, says if you're using spray on sunscreen, you need to rub it in for it to work. Sprays will work if you use them properly. <laughs> and by properly, I mean dip them on your skin. If I, when I see people applying sprays at the beach, um, nine out of 10 of them just spray them into the air like a cologne and, and that they're not gonna work that way. Same thing with lotion sunscreen. You need to make sure to spread and rub it evenly on your skin. Roseanne tells me it doesn't matter how high the SPF, it's important to reapply your chosen sunscreen every two hours. And make sure you're applying the right amount of sunscreen. She recommends a teaspoon for your face and a full shot glass worth of sunscreen for your entire body. Now stick around in the next half hour. I'll have what you need to know about preventing skin cancer with the right amount of sunscreen. This might take a while, Monty and Madeline, I'll pass it back to you. <laughs> I've been using the spray wrong for years. We were I just didn't know you were supposed to rub it in. I always rub it in. Well, you're rubbing it in, but you're right now. <laughs> so there you go. All right. Well, from uh, that, let's move right. on here. We have a business spotlight this morning. We I think do. you're going to like this one. There's a new Indian business in the Tri-Cities, and they are selling homemade jams, sauces, and chutneys. How mm, cool. I hope we have sent a sample a little bit mm -hmm. later. Alex. And Alexander Rios uh, is here to kind of tell what you can expect to find on their menu. Good morning, Alex. Madeline Monty, if Richland's couple's dreams are coming true by sharing their flavors with our community, they just opened their stand called Indian Flavor Jar two weeks ago. All their chutneys, jams, and sauces are Indian inspired. Their tamarind sauce is made from tamarind. It's salty and sweet. They also sell pineapple jam and mango chutney. The main difference between jam and chutney is that jam is sweet while chutney is savory. Chutney can be chunky and full of pieces of dried fruit and raisins, or they can be blended into an, until smooth. They use their raw, for example, they use raw mango with theirs, but the owners want to hear from you. When you eat it, you will know. You will know when you try it. So I always tell to customer, just come and try and then you will explore that uh, taste that you never tasted this before, you know.
If all goes well and people respond well, they plan to expand their business. They are located at the Pasco Farmer's Market on Fridays from 8 to 12. And coming up, I have three different flavors. I will let Monty and Madeline give a taste try. Yeah. But for now, in the studio, Alexander Rios, Wake Up Northwest. Yes, girl, mm. that's what I like to hear. Yep, food. Oh my gosh, Indian food is one of my absolute favorites. My mom and I, when we go to Indian restaurants, right. She orders a smorgasbord. Like we try everything on the menu. It's so well, you fun. have to. And mango chutney is my favorite. That's going to be the first mm, item. Sounds think. good. All right, Monty. Uh, can you give us a little taste of our weather I, forecast? I can. I um, bet it's not as good. <laughs> no, it's probably not. Um, <laughs> I, I have turned down the heat just a little bit. So if well, you, not too spicy. Right. Okay. If you don't like spicy things, I think you'll at least halfway appreciate. Mm. This is a, a two-star forecast. You know, on the heat oh, scale. Oh yes, yes. Right. I not know. a. I'm a, a one-star kind of gal, though. That's <laughs> the thing. Right. Well, I'll see what I can do. Uh, right now in the Tri Cities, the Consulates Carpet Tower camera on the Porta Kinoics Clover Island, getting ready for a beautiful sunrise. We're sitting at 64 degrees right now. Winds blowing lightly out of the southwest at six miles an hour, and we have most clear skies. We've got that haze out there. You know, we do have fires across the eastern Washington down into Oregon and northern California. Uh, but so far, our air quality remains good, but we're going to keep it a bit hazy. You know, that dirty ring around the horizon is what we have on tap for today. 62 degrees, variable winds at three miles an hour and temperatures not bad. Uh, a pleasant way to start your Thursday morning in the mid 50s to the mid 60s and by noon warming up to 86 degrees in the Tri-Cities, 85 in Yakima. It will be just a little bit cooler here this afternoon and this evening, but still, when you look at the, uh, the bigger picture, we're still going to remain above average for this time of year. 94 degrees in Yakima, 97 in the Tri-Cities. Radar satellite combined, yesterday we had a weak disturbance that gave us a few straight thunderstorms during the early morning hours. We've got another one dropping down uh, the coast of British Columbia. That little disturbance will swing through uh, late this evening through tonight with another chance of a couple of stray dry thunderstorms. We don't need that. We need some rain, but uh, these thunderstorms, uh, if they do pop up, will be very dry, so lightning could trigger uh, a couple of more fires, so we'll keep a close eye on that for you. I think the chances are only about 10%, slightly more along the U.S.-Canadian border. And in our neck of the woods, if we have anything develop, it'll most likely be in the blues overnight tonight through early tomorrow morning. Most everyone else, though, just staying dry. Temperatures here today a little bit cooler, mid-90s for most of us. Breezy winds developing later this afternoon in the Kittitas Valley. Tonight, a mild night, and here's our extended forecast. Temperatures uh, once again climb to near 100 on Friday. This weekend is going to be a scorcher. Look at Saturday, 104 in the Tri-Cities, 102 in Yakima. Winds picking up Saturday afternoon, breezy for Sunday and Monday as well. So that means our fire danger ramping back up again uh, just in time for the weekend. So we've got to be fire wise. We've got to help those firefighters and not trigger any new fires around uh, the Pacific Northwest. We cool down to the mid and upper 90s on Monday, Tuesday back to the triple digits and then we fall back into the 90s next Wednesday. But look at that. That is seven days and not a raindrop in that forecast. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Wake Up Northwest. It is now 516. Yeah, right now, uh, some confusion about the downtown Yakima Farmers Markets is causing some tension in the community, and it's all because of the market's names. Now, the uh, downtown Yakima Farmers Market sometimes leaves the word downtown out of their name on press releases or community announcements. Yeah, it is a little confusing, and the downtown Yakima Farmers Market Manager, you bet, uh, Leopard says she doesn't know why the word is left out, but she says after press releases are sent out, it's the outside sources who tend to give, well, incorrect information. However, the Yakima Farmers Market manager says the Downtown Association leaves downtown out of their press releases intentionally. Huh. I've talked to several different people about it. They don't care. Anytime they can confuse people, they're willing to do that. 
Now, Eastridge says that their market had been around for 18 years before they got kicked out of their downtown location. Now, the new market then started with the same name our and hours and the location, which bothers him. Leopard says she doesn't, uh, she does not uh, go to look to cause any problems and is glad that there is two markets because it's beneficial to the vendors. Yeah, but if you get confused about which market to go to, they say always check the flyers for the addresses. At least if you don't have the name right, you can at least get the address. Right, but how about going to both markets and make just everybody happy? They need to come together and work it out. Yeah, no tension, just some good fresh food. Mm -hmm. All right, it's 518. You're watching Wake Up Northwest. Your full forecast coming up in just two minutes.